So hello, everybody. Um, this, this is funny, pointing out the Lenovo internals, this is Boris slide deck. This is actually the very last slide in the deck, um, but I put it at the front. I just wanted to say thank you to um, the Fedora community. You guys have been fantastic. You've been very um, welcoming uh, and uh, just wanted to kind of Right off the bat, the, the main aim of my talk now, I, I, I'm going to cover a bunch of Lenovo stuff, but I wanted to say thank you. And um, they say collaboration is, I think, 80% listening. Probably should be more. Um, but yeah, I want to hear from you guys as well. So I will probably talk too much. I'll try not to. Um, but yeah, thank you, Fedora. Um, from my point of view, it's been fantastic. And I, I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Uh, introduction and overview. So just to introduce myself, I've got uh, John Trasso is joining uh, my, my colleague. So uh, I'm Mark Pearson. Uh, so I'm the, uh, I think, Linux technical lead for the Linux PCT. Um, a lot of you would have seen me around before, but for those who knew, I kind of, we have a team in Lenovo working getting Linux on um, desktops. I am in Ottawa in Canada uh, and John's face, I don't know, he's hiding. It's, it's early in the morning. In the <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, Neil, just as a note, as I get ready for this, my wife said, have you had a shower? And I was like, you can't tell me, but I have had a shower. So just so you know, I smell good too. Um, <laughs> um, as for my face, I can try to do something about that, but I did not have a chance to test my video. So you okay. might be looking up my nostrils for a couple of seconds. I'll let... That Dell oh, right, camera. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and if you, well, do you want to introduce yourself while, while, we, while you show everybody your nostrils? Uh, so um, I'm Mark's counterpart on the um, commercial marketing side. I work, uh, I'm basically the software product manager for all of our Lenovo workstations. So I'm, I, ba I work with him and I take all of the business cases up and discuss them with management and get approval and push for the overall Linux strategy across Lenovo. Yeah. So, and John frequently uh, s s saves my bacon and, and um, helps me out. So, uh. <laughs> alrighty. So, um, as I said, I really like this 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 to be more of a conversation Q and A. I definitely want to hear from from you guys. I was a little bit nervous about having fifty minutes of just open questions, so I've put together some topics to cover um, that we'll cover here. So. I try to guess what would be interesting and useful. Um, if something is completely useless, you can let me know. But I'm, I'm hoping some of it is, is of interest to everybody. Uh, we will talk about the web sales update, and we will talk about the Fedora portal. And then uh, I've got just a slide describing some of what I learned, for sure, and some of the process that went into doing releasing a Linux platform um, for the first time. It's been an interesting exercise. Uh, and then I've just got a bunch of stuff about other things that Lenovo are doing, more Linux related, not specifically Fedora, but more Linux, just kind of let you guys know what else we're up to. And then, yeah, I, I was planning on leaving a big questions feedback. I'll, I think I'll take questions as they come along. I've got the chat up here. Um, it's kind of annoying. The screen's there, the camera's there, so my apologies. Um, but I'll try and take questions as we go along and keep it as interactive as possible. And there's Monsieur John. Hi, John. Alrighty. So I'm assuming one of the big things everyone wants to know is about the web sales update. Where are those platforms? So let's get into it. So the X1 Carbonate has cleared all but the last paperwork hurdle. It's basically it's with the web sales team uh, to enable it and get it up on the web. And we got confirmation it will be before August 31st. So I can't give you it will be this date, but they promise they will have it done before August 31st, hopefully sooner. But worst case set. August 31st is as your date. So uh, I've been pushing hard for this one. <laughs> so we have the P1 Gen 2 and the P53 as well. Um, no, this is not secret stuff, Luna. You're the first people to know. Well, no, Matthew's the first person to know. Um, I told him before this and, and then. But, uh, but no, this is not a uh, secret. Um, We'll try and get you a more fixed date. I mean, up to that, um, we, I don't think we haven't done any media announcement either. But honestly, this stuff is fairly hot off the press. Um, I was, so P1 Gen yeah. 250. Yeah, go for it, John. I was just going to interject that I'm going to try to get us a formal announcement through PR this week. So um, it, it's not a problem if you guys socialize it a bit, but don't expect a, a big Lenovo statement until we've got that a few more out. days. Yeah. Oh, we, we don't get angry, Luna. Um, and uh, so, uh, Michelle, I'll come back to your question in a bit. I saw it. 
So uh, P1 Gen 2, P3 3 are the same state. The images are ready. They've got a few more enablement stems to go. Um, I was really hoping, you know, target date is, and I filled this in just this morning because I was hoping to put the date in there. Um, coming soon. So, John, do you want to, so we're targeting end of August as well? Just yeah, the, the, we're targeting the same schedule. Good. Targeting the same schedule. So, before the end of August, um, same thing. It'll be the week, this annou the announcement that I'm going to try to get for this week will cover these as well. So, but it's, same ballpark and coming soon. And just the, the final teaser. Um, so we did get approved to do Fedora on the P1 Gen 3 and the P15. So successes to P1 Gen 3 and P53. So they will be coming along later this year. Uh, we've started testing on those and you know, the, the process starts. So it's, it's not just those three now, we got permission to go ahead and do that. Uh -huh. Right, so uh, Michelle, for your question on worldwide, yes, it will be worldwide. The only issue I know of is Russia. Um, there is some legal issues with Russia software, which means that we can't confirm Russia yet, but otherwise plan is worldwide. Did you want to add anything there, John? Yes, so there, um, while they will be worldwide, the web sales enablement is done. Each country has, or each geo has different websites. So they tend to lag a little bit. Um, so in the meantime, once they're live for sale here in the US, anybody it can go to their, their local store and use the call-in number to reach inbound sales who will be able to configure a system for you. You might just not be able to do it on the web for a little bit until they catch up. Thanks, John. All righty. Could you? Uh... Yes. Oh, well, I mean, you, you can install it. Oh, can we do it? No, we can't ship you. We can't install a, so, so the question is, could you install the Fedora image to those who selected the Ubuntu one? So obviously we have a uh, full configuration for, for Ubuntu. Uh, we can't, we can't install Fedora and manufacturing that, 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 that just wouldn't work, but you can buy the Ubuntu one and put Fedora on it. There's nothing stopping you. Uh, I've put Fedora on a lot of our platforms. It works fine. So yes. Um, ETA for catching up. <laughs> it really, it's a prioritization question for the, the individual geo web teams. So a lot depends on what, what promotions they've got going on, what other work they've got going on. Um, it could be, it could be any, um, anything from a week to they, some of them might simply decide not to put it up on the web. Each geo has their own decision for that. But again, I, it, I do have it enabled in the internal configurators. So inbound sales will always be able to configure this for you and sell it to you. Okay. And um, each refresh needs to be manually approved. So we're still working through that and it'll be interesting when Fedora 33 comes out. We do have a test cycle that it has to go through. Um, so it's not gonna happen automatically. There's costs and time and all the rest of it. So we're not picking up, I mean, Fedora changes so often. It's not like you get a new image every day. Um, so we're still gauging that one. Um, might be something to actually come back to you guys for recommendations, but um, uh, yeah, I don't have a great answer for you there, but yes, I'm, I'm kind of hoping we do updates at least for the big releases. Um, it's gonna depend honestly a little bit on resources and, and what's available. Um, oh, but oh, you mean a hardware refresh? Uh, well, P1 Gen 3, yeah, we, we don't know for the rest. It's a little bit. Do you want to cover this one, John? Yeah, so so um, generally what I do on the workstation side is I, I go ahead and get it. I've already got it in the MR, MRD documents, the marketing requirement stocks for those successor products. So that line will continue to offer them. Whether any expansions to that, like for instance, if we if we branch off and we want to add it on the P53s, for instance, that becomes a a separate discussion and approval because then we have to get back into the business case. Okay, um, I'm going to be a little bit careful because this question is going out first. So, Julian, I'm going to actually come back to your question when I do the timeline for product because it will give you an idea of what's involved with releasing a new image. Um, and so I'll, I'll cover that then. I, I mean, I've already touched on it, but just for that. Uh, L, um, LVFS, I assume. Uh, so Mar 
uh, and so Ma Marcin, Marcin, I don't know, uh, official list roadmap for LVFS support. Um, the way it works is we are pushing very hard that LVFS support is for all platforms, all firmware devices on the platform. So BIOS and uh, the system firmware, you will get it for all our Linux supported platforms. Um, for the devices, we need support from the manufacturers and they get strongly pushed for it. It's, it should happen. Um, it is happening, sorry, excuse me, but sometimes it's slower than others. So I, it's not it's not 100% yet, but we're really working on it. The number of devices is going down. I know since I joined the team last year, uh, it's the, the, the gap is getting smaller, but we are looking at that and, and working on it. Did you want to add anything on LVFS, John? No, I think that covers it. Uh, okay. Um, I did want to note, though, that you did miss a question from Michelle. Oh, I did? Um, yeah. Is, the question is, is so, Silver so Blue in plan on Lenovo or just Workstation? Uh, it's just Workstation uh, right now. I, so I actually played with Silver Blue um, a month or so back. Um, there was a Fedora Magazine article. Hey, push a shout out for Ben. I love Fedora Magazine. It's brilliant. Um, and it had a, an article about Silver Blue, and I went and tried it. It works, it works nicely. So I, I ran it on the X1 Carbon. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, right now, I, honestly, we don't have the bandwidth to do multiple multiple versions. Um, so not yet. Workstation for now. We'll take if if yours if Silver Blue takes over Workstation, then I guess we would switch maybe to. But that's a discussion for the future. Um, uh, the function and control keys that are swappable. Is there a way to configure this? I don't know the answer to that one, or will we need BIOS? I think uh, you might have to send me an email on that one, and I'd have to go dig into it. So my email address is right at the end of the presentation, but Mark Pearson at Lenovo. I, I want to say that it requires the BIOS, and that, but um, that we can use LMI potentially to do that. Yes, and we will mention LMI later. It's a good question. OK, so my, I can't, Ryan, I can't give you a good answer now, but I will. Uh, dee -dee -dee. Um, Super interesting, the MD2014. So for those who are interested, there was a poll that we created yesterday uh, um, about whether you'd rather have an Intel or an AMD platform, which was interesting. So I genuinely am interested in finding out which platforms people want. Um, quite often, it's a case of there's a range. Um, I, we, John and I were discussing it, just, just what's the best way to collect that information. So for now, send me the details. Um, maybe as an email, I'll collect them together. Uh, it is, I'd like to find a way of doing that because, uh, <laughs> thanks Matthew, uh, it does drive. We want to, we want to provide what, what you guys want, right? There's no point us spending a lot of time and effort putting it on platforms that aren't useful to the community and, and Linux developers. Um, but yeah, everybody does want something different. So anyway, I think we've got some answers in there, John. Um, <laughs> yep. Well, actually I, I was going to suggest it, it would probably be a good thing if we want to start a forum thread to solicit this feedback. That's, that's an interesting idea. I'll mention because that, 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 yeah. that way Pete, everybody's comments will be visible to the rest of the community and we'll get yeah. get more discussion. Yeah, and, and just that Neil, I, I've had a few comments about NVIDIA, it's, it's, uh, it's not just Fedora. Um, that's by the by. Did, did, uh, did I miss anything else? Any chance of any Lenovo two-in-one laptops? Ah, that, that's, so two-in-one is, I have to be careful because I, I keep getting stuck on internal curtain names, but there's the detachable. Is that what we're talking about? So that doesn't have Linux enablement on it. Partly, a lot of this is driven by the product teams not wanting it. Uh, or the foldable one, yeah. Now I played with the, uh, the foldable one when I was uh, down in uh, Morrisville, North uh, Carolina um, last. Um, actually, uh, it, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting technology. Uh, we don't have Linux enablement on that now, so yeah, I can't comment. Um, we, yeah, that doesn't have Linux on it. Full stop right now, I think partly because it's too new. Um, it'll be interesting to see what's needed to make it work from a Linux point of view. I'm assuming there'll be changes needed in GNOME or whatever. Um, so the Yogas are covered. Yeah, we have Linux enablement on the Yogas. So, okay. You actually, uh, you, uh, so I'm kind of, Neil, I have to, I'll have to talk to you uh, at some point if you've uh, got it running on the fold, because I would, I, I asked for one, so I could play with it and I, I haven't got one. So, um, so there you go. Um, okay. How the P53 is validated. Oh, uh, no, yeah, we, uh, so 
uh, it depends on this. So obviously for Fedora, we validated it with Nouveau. Um, and when I come to the charts later, it'll be part of the testing, but yeah, no, we, we do and uh, Nouveau. And um, the test team did test the NVIDIA install on Fedora, but it wasn't priority. It does the NVIDIA drive get tested through the other distros. So it gets covered as well. Um, so um, yes, and the external monitor requires the NVIDIA card set as primary GPU, yes. So, but it, we, we do test with Nuvo and Intel only and, you know, both hybrid and discrete mode. Alrighty, so I'm gonna move on and oh, there's a big section at the end if you think of any other questions that come up. So um, next one is the uh, Fedora portal, that we've got a Linux portal. So um, the idea here is we wanted a way to, um, to, to make it easier for Linux developers to get hold of these platforms we wanted to see. Uh, we wanna work with the community and, and uh, John, this was your idea, right? Um, so John ran with this one. But we, yeah, there will be a portal and you'll be able to uh, go in with, and log in with your fedoraproject.org uh, email ID. So recommend making sure your Fedora project email address works. I know mine doesn't right now, so I've got to get that fixed. Um, but you'll be able to register. You, you can create an account using that and you basically you get an extra discount. So um, the screenshot there is from the employee one because I couldn't get into the, uh, the, the, the Linux one. But um, yeah, basically it it is as easy as that. Um, we will announce the URL. It will be in the August time frame as well with with everything else. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it's good. Uh, and just it's for everything Lenovo. It's not just the Linux ones. You should be able to get anything. So if you do want that T14 AMD and we don't have it for actually we do have uh, Linux on that one, but. If you the foldable, there you go. If you want to go buy the foldable, you'll be able to buy it with a discount and there we are. So alrighty. Um actually and so Julian, I've already got enough criteria to get the email address. It's just for some reason it's bouncing right now. It's more a technical issue rather than that. It's uh, uh Ben Ben was helping me out yesterday <laughs> with that one, but we didn't quite get there. Otherwise I would have had a screenshot of the real thing. Um so anyway. Um as for the quantity of the discount, that that varies and it's it's all handled by a different team on the on the back end, so it will actually periodically change. Like if we've got a a lot of inventory or something, then it'll go it'll increase. If we're trying to get rid of something, the discount on a specific product will increase. So there there's a lot of moving pieces there, so it's not a fixed number, yeah. um, but it is. Um, I I've been told it is comparable to what we get as employees. Right, and just so you know, it's the same for the employee one as well. I. I I, I have spent my own money on Lenovo equipment using the employee discount, and it's sometimes it's worth monitoring what's happening. And and yeah, it, I, I don't know how they decide the price on that. So, so. And and Christian, in terms of your answer, um, that is actually a possibility. You can buy the systems with no OS. Um, however, to do Not so, you actually do have to call that number to spot to talk to the inbound sales team, and they can configure it that way. Now, to note, there are some countries where that's not permitted where there are regulations saying that it has to ship with an operating system. And if so, it will just default to installing something like FreeDOS or something on there for you. Alrighty. And um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like the comment. Okay. And then one more one more thing. Um, in terms of the question, I forget who who it came from, around um, potential fake contributors just trying to get access. Uh, so so we're not announcing this widely publicly. Um, basically, yeah. we're we're leaving it to to Mark and and the other folks on the Fedora leadership team to communicate it across the entire um, organization of contributors. But if we start seeing a big problem where you guys are seeing a lot of people registering who aren't actually contributing then we'll, we can discuss with you in terms of how we can try to line that up. But we found that, we thought that doing it via the fedoraproject.org was much simpler than asking for a list of emails that we had to continually update and there's privacy concerns and whatnot that are all much more difficult. Yeah. 
So we're hoping the fedoraproject.org is a nice easy way of just making it available to your whole community without extra paperwork. But if it doesn't work, let us know, we can change it, so. Um, okay. Uh, and yeah, Matt, Matthew, hey, you know where to hit, hit me if, uh, if there's issues. It's, uh, yeah, the, the aim is to help Fedora. We definitely don't want to make your lives worse. <laughs> that would be bad. Alrighty, so they were the they were the big ones for. So um, after this, I'm going to get more into just stuff that I thought would be interesting, um, and uh, keep an eye on, on uh, questions. So I thought doing anything for the first time, I actually thought it'd be an interesting poll. Like, first time is it, is it exciting, interesting, or just pure hell? Um, I learned a lot doing this, um, but so doing a Linux platform on the web has been something that has actually been worked on for. Uh, very long time. There's a lot of different pieces that have to go together. So, um, but from Fedora point of view, let's give you that. So uh, we kicked off the project in uh, February, 2020. Uh, Matthew and I both traveled down to Morrisville and met up with a whole bunch of different people in uh, different teams in Lenovo, um, ate some curry, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, and basically I think everybody signed off. That's, uh, that's my recollection anyway. Um, and then after that, it's fairly standard, what you'd expect. We had the uh, initial testing. So we took the uh, initial Fedora 32 image and we put it on platforms and it went to testing, um, bug fixing, alpha image, beta image, yeah, that, that kind of side of things. The only thing that was interesting there is it was still stealth. Um, and so I know all the bugs were private bugs um, and it was all kind of, and doing something in an open community like Fedora, but stealth. So, Again, back to that very first slide. Thank you, because I know it was a bit weird, uh, but appreciate your help on that one. Um, so, and going forward, I expect us to be doing things much more um, publicly. Uh, don't don't expect the Fedora stuff to be stealth anymore. Um, so April 24th, we had the Fedora 32 announcement. And again, that, from my point of view, that was fun. I'd never been involved with something like that. The reaction, media, community, everything was genuinely amazing. It was, and just so you guys know, that makes a difference in Lenovo because relatively small team, but it gets executives aware of how important the Linux community is. And, and that's good. And just, you know, I'm struggling to read the comments as go up. So John, I'll leave you to monitor those. Um, so then we, after the announcement, so May to June, we created our final GA image based off the the Fedora 32 release, and it went through the final testing pass. We had a few last minute issues. There wasn't anything major, but we had a few, a few things to, that uh, are not necessarily fixed in that particular image, but uh, now upstream and then back down into Fedora 32. Ooh, uh, something else that came up, and it ties in a little bit to the worldwide release. So we have to do energy certification uh, labels, uh, energy certification. There's actually, there's seven different certifications it has to go through. And for the workstations with a different graphics card, every flavor. Uh, actually, it, I'd say the panel, I think, is matter. But anyway, it's quite a lot of quite a lot of process there. So it, this is all stuff that's happening in the background that you don't even think about. But we need that energy certification, or we can't sell on the web. Uh, so that was happening. There were some, there was um, you know a few few hiccups along the way there that needed to be learned about, understood. Um, so that. Um, something else that came up that was probably should have been expected somewhat, but we had to do improve our product documentation. It was obviously strongly Windows based. Um, so we now have Linux documentation for our products, uh, which which I think is is important. Um, it's not perfect, but it's it, it's um, it's pretty good. So we're, we're happy about that. And so when you get your platform, it actually has a document with how to use Linux on it. Um, and if there's mistakes, you can beat me up for that one. Uh, the other one that, that um, so we support team training, it, it, I kind of do it for July. Some of that was before, but like all these things, as you get close to the crunch, people start to ask more questions and raise more concerns. And so a lot of it is been that. So now if what should happen if you call our support team instead of saying Linux isn't supported, uh, they should take your call. Um, they are obviously new to this, so please be nice to them if you do have any support calls. A lot of the support calls are ultimately, you know, level one, level two, and then they will come through to to my team, uh, and you're more likely to get support from us. But but at least 
uh, I'm hoping the support team will, as they get more and more um, Linux experience, that'll be good. So there was quite some effort involved there to make sure they were on board and not completely panicking. Um, and then the last bit, July to present, so we're beginning of August, but um, we kind of touched on this, but you, there, there's lots of paperwork. There's lots of bits you're like, oh, can we release to the web? And well, you need to have this sign off, this piece of paperwork, these configurator rules. Uh, the web sales, there's lots of little pieces, and it's not until you actually pull the trigger that you suddenly find out there's other launch logistics that you thought you had covered. But, uh, so that's why um, I know I've had lots of questions like, where are these? It's like, and I've been saying it's really soon for about a month, um, and it's just taken a little bit. So it's it's going to be, from my point of view, it's going to be really exciting to uh, hit the final web sales launcher. August, August it is. So so there you go. So I will take a pause and a quick drink. Uh, Scan, was there anything you noticed that? So the I answered one of them in the chat already, but the other one was just are the docs open source? Um, they're pretty sure that we get some contributors if we That's did a, something like that. It's a really interesting idea, but no, it's not, and it's not in a format that we can open source. Having been through the pain of editing them, uh, which has been a lot back for it's. I really like the idea, but no, it's not, and I, I will take that one on board. I'm not going to make any promises on that one. Uh, yeah, that will, that one would be tough. Again, bear in mind, Linux is still small, so um, I do a fair amount of begging and wheedling and borrowing. Um, so, not yet. Um, in terms of the in terms of the support piece, um, so generally it, it's only on approved lineups. So if if you mm. have a T series that you, that you want to do this on, um, reproduce it on Ubuntu, <laughs> even if it's just a boot disk. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. That, that's good enough. If you can reproduce that's it on fine. a boot disk oh. Ubuntu, you can probably get support to help you out. And and I will add that. So for my team, and we'll, I'll come cover this a bit later. We do support. We try. We try really hard to support all distros. Obviously, Fedora, Red Hat help because we have good contacts with you guys, so they they get more priority. Um, Ubuntu we work with closely as well. But we try and support all the all the others uh, as much as we can. Usually. My my experience is most cases, NVIDIA drivers aside, uh, if you fix it on one distro, get it upstream, it'll come down into the others. We're very focused on making sure everything goes upstream. I don't want fixes in one distro and not another. I, I can't cope with that, to be honest. So uh, yeah, our aim is upstream um, and yeah. So. On the P73 issue, we've, we've discussed a little bit. Um, so it, it is a possibility. We, we haven't decided to pull the trigger on it yet, uh, simply because, uh, honestly, the 17-inch has a lot lower volumes than the 15-inch does. So we wanted to prioritize that up as the, the more impactful for the community. Um, and uh, it's kind of interesting. There was the the, the question about, yeah, the, the Michelle's comment about uh, getting credit. It's an, it's an interesting issue. And if anybody has ideas, so we have quite a few systems that people buy as Windows and put Linux on. And it's how do we track that so that our executive team understands that Linux is important. Um, so there, there is data out there. And we've been using that. But if anybody has any brilliant ideas, obviously privacy is important. Um, and we don't want to invade that. But if we can find ways of getting numbers and saying, hey, yeah, there are so many millions of uh, Fedora users out there, <laughs> um, then, then that that's good. Um, it, it it all helps. <clears throat> Alrighty. So, any last questions on just the timeline? It's kind. Of, I know it's just an overview. I'm not allowed to give too many nitty gritty details because it's it's internal process. But I thought it'd be interesting just so you when you sit there and go, why does it take so long? This is why. And actually, so just I will look back right to that question. So, if we do a new image. Um, we do have to go through that testing path to make sure it's up to Lenovo standards. We want to make sure our customers have a good experience. That is absolutely key. I get shot if our customers don't have a good experience. Um, energy certification can potentially come in. It, it depends. But yeah, if we do an update, then we have to do energy certification. Again, it's another time cost exercise. Uh, product, product documentation, you're probably safe on unless there's major changes. Um, and, and then the rest is fairly easy. But just so you understand why we don't sit there and just do it like this. 
there's stuff that happens in the background. Alrighty. Uh, small. Cool. Right. So the next couple of slides aren't mine. Um, they're actually taken from a presentation that uh, my previous boss used to do for customers asking about what Lenovo was doing with Linux. Um, I threw them in because they're useful. They give an overview of what we did. They it covers all the all the main points, and I wanted to give an idea of what else our team does. Um, I'm not going to spend masses of time on this unless it triggers any particular questions or comments. Um, but I mean. I'm sure you guys have heard about the full config on Ubuntu and Red Hat. So we have that for, you know, if, I know we can't do Fedora and everything, but at least we have Linux on these platforms and you can have pretty good confidence that Fedora is going to run well. Um, uh, we've also been doing Linux certification on the Thunderbolt 3 Workstation Gen 2. That's a mouthful. Doc, um, I've, I've been using it on my P1 Gen 2. Um, we've still got some bugs on that one, but um, it's things like that are, are improving. Um, work with Linux distributions, component drivers, LVFS support. I will mention that again later, but LVFS support is very important to us. Uh, and think LMI, I will come to that later. We do a bunch of sales support, not surprisingly. One of the fun pieces of my job, I don't do as much coding as I used to, but I get to talk to a lot of customers and a lot of Linux community and things like that, which I love. I love hearing from you guys genuinely. If you know, I try and respond as much as possible. I want to hear what you guys want. And so I've really enjoyed that side of things. It's been new for me. I used to be just a team of one working on kernels on network switches um, and never met a customer ever. So it's been new, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, like, I like hearing from you guys. You can bug me. Um, community participation is very important. I think it's the only way we can have any success. And I, it's just it's just key. Uh, so we've started contributing to the kernel. Um, it's new. I will cover that a little bit later. Uh, we're making sure we partner with vendors to deliver improved Linux support, um, which I think is also important. Conference sponsorship. Hey, we're here. Um, <laughs> and uh, we do. I keep an eye on a number of uh, mailing lists and forums. Um, I, I'll, I'll mention those later. There's a lot of traffic, so I. My, my filters are a little bit tuned, um, but I try and keep an eye on stuff that's Lenovo related on, on some key things. And I'm open for suggestions for other things with bandwidth issues. Uh, and customer engagement is kind of linked a little bit to Salesport, but uh, we just, you guys know, we, we do customized uh, preload if offerings for big corporate clients. Um, probably not of interest here, but we do do that. Uh, post sale support, we do a lot of that. Uh, and we do have a dedicated Lenovo Linux forum. It has a Fedora section on there. I'll have the link to that shortly. Um, and we're encouraging anybody to participate in our Lenovo Linux forums. If it's Lenovo related, um, hey, we, 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 you know, we, want to, we want to build up our own open source community as well to make sure that we're getting everybody from everywhere. Right. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. It looks like I triggered a uh, conversation about the, <laughs> the the one question that came through that that hadn't been answered yet, Mark, was if you use OBS. OBS. That rings a bell, but I'm pulling a blank. It's Saturday morning. OBS. Uh, Douglas, could you expand on what you mean by that then? No. No, we don't use Open Build Service. No, we take, honestly, we take, so actually, yeah, that's an interesting question though. For the Fedora one, we take the image off the web. That's what we do. It's the Fedora image. And so how it works is we install it on the platform. We add, I think, three or four documents to slash ops Lenovo. Um, and take a snapshot, and then that goes off to manufacturing. So uh, we, we don't actually build the uh, Fedora image. We use what you guys provide. And I think that's important. Uh, I'd, I'd actually be slightly hesitant about us building our own because there's too much opportunity for us to make changes. And I don't know. I'd, I'd be open to a discussion on it, but I'd rather use what the community provides. Um, and Ryan, yes. Yeah, so what's in Optal Novo? The uh, utterly exciting uh, license agreement i think I, i've got the list somewhere it's a license agreement the product document which is actually i mean it's, you guys wouldn't need it but it's there so um and what's the third one I, there's another legal thing honestly 
you're not missing out. Um, yeah, legal stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, yeah, we and and I, I will take that as a small segue. So doing open source the right way is important to us. Um, I actually spend a chunk of time uh, doing open source reviews for. So I didn't put it on my timeline slide. Part of that I do. When we do a, an image release, I have to go to our open source, uh, I went to see open source, I can't remember what the other is, committee, but I have to go to them and explain exactly what we're putting in this image. And I have to get sign off from an executive that we haven't done anything we shouldn't and make sure that if people want to access what is in the image, they can do that. So we, we do actually have quite a few legal checks and balances, unsurprisingly, uh, and it's something which we take seriously. So, uh, it's the warranty. The, the, war the warranty stuff is all tracked separately. Yes. Um, it isn't, nothing's in the, on the image itself. Uh, is it, I thought it was mentioned. Uh, there, I, uh, there, yeah. There's probably something in there from a legal blurb, but there's yeah. nothing you need to do with the files on the thing. Oh, the disk. yeah. No, they, they mean, read, that, that's yeah. all processed. It's just part of your purchase. Yeah. Yeah. They're all read only files. So, um, if you're really interested, I'll send them to you. <laughs> they and they should end up on the Lenovo support website once we release. That's something I need to make sure happens. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, so in answer to your question, Michelle, uh, the the P53 and the P1 are both mobile workstations, actually. So the, the, we are supporting it on the workstations already. Um, as in the P, the next generation, the the P1 Gen 3 and the um, P15 are also mobile workstations. If we expand to desktop workstations, uh, we are still discussing which ones specifically um, would make the most sense. I believe most likely we would start with the P340 tower, um, as those are the, the entry level workstations that tend to have a much higher volumes and would give us a, a broader understanding of where the market would find use for them and value for them. The we we could very well do the P five twenty as well. Um, that that's a lot of it is going to be, um, and and for the for the Facebook request, I mean, if if uh, that's something that's interesting to you, by all means, I'll be happy to have a conversation. Uh, we can we can definitely we can definitely look at doing it as long as we have um some some understanding of what the volume and demand is for for the product. <laughs> Cool. Uh, so I, again, this is another slide. I kind of threw it up there. I'll, I'll, I'll go over it quickly. It's, it's a little bit repetitive to the previous one, but it was a whole slide that I could add to presentation without spending time writing. Um, so just from a support point of view, you know what, it, it, it really is is repetitive, but just, just to outline some of the pieces we do, working with partners, uh, working with the community, answering lots of questions, debugging. Um, I actually am going to have a support-related question for you guys when I get to the end. Um, remind me if I forget. So I don't. I, I was a bit worried about time, partly why I put this in, but there's been so many questions that I'm just going to roll on. Um, so what else? Uh, so I mentioned it. There's the Lenovo Linux forums. You can go there. If you go, you will find there is a Fedora section there too. Um, and anybody's welcome to contribute. It's not a Lenovo employee thing only. I, I spend a bunch of time on there. Uh, I haven't this week, I've been busy. Um, but I, you know, my team, all, they actually all have in there, um, we have internal rate, you know, tasks that you have to do. And they all have, they have to spend so much time on, on the forum answering questions. Um, so we, we try there. If uh, if you can't get hold of me, that's a good place to go. There are other people in Lenovo who will be looking at it. And if if you see a Fedora-related question on there and you know the answer, please jump in. Um, so I mentioned earlier, I, you know, trying to become a better member of the open source community, trying to listen uh, on the mailing list and answer questions or if issues come up, where we can help find a solution. Do that. So. Uh, I kind of threw in, this was a little bit just off the top of my head, but mainly list that I've participated in and I know others in the team have too. So um, this year, of course, the Fedora Devel uh, group is there. I keep an eye on that. If, if you want something to hit my inbox, put it on there, but put the word Lenovo in it and it does get filled out. I do check the other messages. I followed the ButterFS uh, discussion with interest. That was, was interesting. Um, 
but but yeah and and i do feel about anything that has mentions lenovo specifically um it, it comes up into my uh, inbox um i will say uh yeah always looking for audio experts i i still feel like we're missing stuff on audio audio experts who if, if you're out there you guys are golden um so um and the last one lvfs there is actually a um I'm not sure what the right word is but there's a there's a um a forum on their firmware Lenovo ThinkPad. I'm going to mention this one specifically. There's um, Kathleen, who's in the team on Japan in Japan. Who uh, so I was trying to improve how much uh, how we responded to firmware update issues. We get we get a few of them. It seems to be still new and 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 actually it's an inter uh, yeah maybe channel slight word. Uh, incidentally, a real shout out for um, Richard Hughes at Red Hat for the work he's done. That's amazing. Um, but we, you know, trying to improve how we monitor and answer answer users' calls. And um, there, this uh, came came all in, uh, name popped up and and was answering all these questions. And I was like, who is this? I don't know them. So, and she's actually working with a team in Japan, and they had recognised the same need. It was not driven by me. They had recognised it, and they were. She, she's now participating. So. From my point of view, that's really exciting because it means Lenovo's getting it, and there's things happening outside of our team. So uh, I, I obviously I work with her now, uh, and that's good. But for me, that was like this is good. It's growing, and it's it's important. So um, are there uh, so were there any specific questions about like the mailing list or the forums or anything on that that I can address before I move on and was have another little pause. It looked like it was carrying on with AMDG. So I might, the AMD one uh, will come back to you if there's anything specific at the end. Um, I'm going to mention Think LMI. Uh, it's a product that uh, it's product. That's a long word. Application that we've just released publicly on GitHub. Uh, so it's kind of our first first one. Um, it's a utility to uh, provide access to the BIOS WMI settings. Uh, so you can go and get and set. Uh, your BIOS settings using the WMI interface if you come across that. Um, there's two parts to it, a kernel driver, a user space utility. So uh, we've been working on it internally. We got, it, uh, got approval to put it up and put it up on GitHub and have it public. Uh, the kernel driver, I would like to get that into the kernel. It's The quality is not ready yet. We're currently undergoing review to make sure it's really um, solid and then we'll start the challenging kernel review process uh, but the plan is to get that upstream into the kernel and then it will just be the use space utility i'm hoping eventually i can come to fedora and say hey can i package think lmi as a user space utility um but i realize that's down the road a little bit I need the kernel driver in first so uh if you're interested in that check it out um ask questions participate all the usual yeah exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah I, it didn't seem worth doing. Uh, so just answering Neil's question about it's. Uh, I, we, I think we. I think I'll take guidance on this, but I think we need the kernel part in first before it. It's really useful. I don't want people installing a user here, and I don't can't imagine going down the road of having a out of tree kernel driver is much fun. So again, if I'm wrong, let me know. Um, and I just met, mentioned these. Uh, we have started contributing to the kernel. Uh, for me personally, this has been really cool. I, I've worked on the Linux kernel with networking switches for a while, and it was always I was not allowed to contribute upstream, which I'm sure is fairly common in different companies. You take, but you don't get back, and it frustrated me. Um, so I think it's, I'm really happy that I'm able to start contributing back to, to, to the community. So we've had... Uh, there's a, a lap mode sensor. It's um, basically just your PCs on the S1 lap. So that has been submitted and accepted. Uh, we have a similar one. There's a palm sensor on not all platforms. But some of you, there's a palm sensor usually in the bottom left corner, sometimes right. Uh, and it can tell if you know, you've know you got your hands resting on the keyboard. So that's currently in progress. Um, I'm, I was responding to some questions just yesterday. Uh, and then the last one, which will be more, more interesting. So um, for anybody who followed the thermal mode issues with DPTF not being up, uh, open sourced. So Lenovo has their, their special firmware for Linux that essentially reproduces what DPTF does so that we can, it senses, it changes the 
different uh, performance modes. So if you put it in high performance mode, it will run faster but hotter. Um, and if you, you can put it in low performance mode and get longer battery life. And if you put it on your lap, it will automatically drop out of high performance mode. So you don't hurt yourself. Um, so we've had that already. It all works automatically in the background, but we're working on putting in some changes in the kernel so that um, users can control it more easily. Uh, there's some stuff we're working on with somebody at Red Hat to get a GNOME user control to do it and, and just generally to make that more Linux friendly. Right now it's all through uh, function hotkeys and we'd like to actually make that more accessible to everybody. So, um, so yeah. Uh, I will say, you know, the, uh, the kernel community has been great, uh, but they teach you teach you where you make mistakes, which is as it should be. All right, ha ha! So I made it to the end, um, and I haven't left enough time for. We covered lots of questions as we went along. So, uh, what did I miss, John? Nothing that I did miss as well. Oh, fingerprints. <laughs> Langdon White fingerprint. Yes, we have fingerprint. Really works. It works. If you so uh, all, all of the Fedora laptops, X1 Carbon 8, P53, P1 Gen 2, the fingerprint reader works. I assume that's what you're asking about because uh, that's usually what I get on the fingerprints. Uh, all of our 2020 platforms, and I was looking at a spreadsheet yesterday to confirm it, but all of our 2020 platforms, the fingerprint reader should work. Um, the older ones. Um, uh, no, so it's down to the vendors. There's two different technologies, match on chip, match on host. Uh, the chip vendors really don't want to do the match on host because they're worried about exposing their IP. Um, so it's difficult. We It has to come from the vendor and they don't want to do it. So what we've done is make sure going forward that our make certified platforms. What? <clears throat> All righty. Do, do, do. Uh, question from Ben, what's the user experience like with unboxing? Do they get oh, GNOME yeah. initial oh, no, set up or is it pre-configured? Yeah. No, it's the usual. So it's the usual. So this is what I'm saying when we, we take uh, these. Yeah, no, they get the standard uh, user setup. We don't have a pre-user. You, you get it, it'll boot up and it launches in the, uh, I think, yeah, the GNOME, the GNOME setup. We be out of out of box experience. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's it's standard. Yeah, no, and wouldn't want to change that. Pre-installed users would be bad. So you can go set your country, your time zone, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> A core boot, sorry, no. <laughs> Just, no. I, I know why, but yeah, that's not even on my radar. That, that, bear, bear in mind we sell Windows laptops. It would be hard. File system partitioning. A file system, uh, whatever's standard with uh, Fedora. So right now it is ext three or four. I should know the answer to that one. Someone's going to say, but yeah, it's the default. We don't we don't change that. So uh, we have followed the discussions about ButterFS, and I think if you guys go with ButterFS, we'll follow that standard unless it has major. Of, yeah, XTF, okay. Uh, unless it has major performance issues, uh, particularly on the workstations where, where, where performance is key. So, uh, yeah, if if that's what you guys are using as your default, we almost certainly will, unless there's problems with it. And if there's problems with it, I uh, suggest that maybe it's not the right choice. But um, I, I know I've had some discussions like if it doesn't work, we can switch to something else. There was a way of doing it, but uh, but yeah. Uh, the, Honestly, our aim is we're provide we're we're doing Fedora on these four Fedora users. So really, we should be we, you know, you're you're our you're our customers. You 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 tell us what you want, and that's <laughs> that's what's that's what's really important. Um, we we just want to make sure it works well on our laptops. So yeah, try and avoid doing something anything that makes it not work well. But that sounds like a normal situation. <sighs> So, uh, Alan, that'd be cool. Keep me in the post on that. Let me know. Uh, I don't do myself. I haven't really looked after the uh, creating the image for uh, manufacturing and that side of things, but I have some experts on my team who do. 
Um, but if if you've got some work there, then let me know. We'd we'd love to know what's happening. Uh, if we can contribute, that's great too. Uh, we'd like to do that. How much testing do? So Ben, the, yeah, it's an interesting question. The short answer is not a lot, to be honest. Uh, it tends to happen more as the crunch comes up for for, for doing that. So um, we, I mean, we we did for the X1 carbonate P1 Gen 2 P53 just because of how it lined up with the cycle. It worked out kind of well. Like we did have the early releases, and we, we were testing with those and you know, finding issues and raising them. And, you know, I'm assuming we're going to do the X1 Carbon 9 next year. It would be weird not to. Um, but I'm not committing to that. Key point. But I, I'm assuming like as we do more platforms, then it will be the same thing. But we don't really have yet a process of just doing continuous testing. Uh, it's something which I do have on my to-do list, some sort of automated test setup so we can catch these things. Um, before, ideally, I would like to catch these things before you know our users really do. Um, but it's not these problem, especially COVID. We we had we have we somewhere I have charts on. We're setting up a remote lab with access to units and all that. Uh, COVID kind of mothballed that, so uh, we think uh, oh, I might have gone off frozen. If you can still hear me right now, my screen is frozen. So, ah, there we go. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I don't know if I went all slow for a bit there. <sighs> so yeah, no, there, there is one one of the nice things with the Linux is honestly there is so much scope for things to do. It's huge. Um, so, lots of lots of room for improvement. Uh, so Ben, I have had discussions with Adam. Um, I don't know that we've particularly done the Novo important test. It's probably some. I mean, I know you guys, which I think is. Yeah, I think we lost Mark. They, they ju literally just upgraded his internet service this week, and I think he's still having some um, growing pain issues. Yeah, exactly. It's fiber, but... Uh, hopefully that's that's being used. And Mark? No, I'm... We, we, we lost everything until just one second ago. Yeah, so I, I, it's... Oh, okay. It's got my internet upgraded this week. I have fiber. I live way, I live out in the countryside in a little village and I got fiber this week. And I was like, what perfect timing, just in time for the conference. So I'm not going to be suffering with slow upload and download speeds. There you go, Ben. I can get behind that. I'm going to blame it on the, uh, <laughs> I'm going to blame it on the hopping. <laughs> All righty. Um, <laughs> Alrighty. Anything else I missed while that happened? So uh, yeah, I think I was yeah, basically saying I, I'd I'd love to find ways to collaborate more generally. Hey. All right, no wrap up. Thanks everybody. Right, Thanks, John. Appreciate you. Enjoy have the rest of the conference. Bye.